Hey everyone, Nate from Nintendo Prime here, and I got a question for the Nintendo fan community out there that likes to create content around Nintendo games. Um, not just like, I'm not talking YouTube content, of course, I'm talking about people who do modifications or um, Unreal Engine uh, redos uh, and stuff like this. Have we not learned yet the way Nintendo is going to react whenever we do something that's massively popular and successful like we want it to be, right? Because we want people to have fun with fan-generated content around Nintendo games. You know, content that doesn't actually hurt Nintendo's bottom line and might actually enhance people's enjoyment of their experiences. But, you know, Nintendo just... They don't, just don't really care. They're going to flex their intellectual property rights to the nth degree. I mean, I'm a YouTube content creator. There was a time in the early days of Nintendo Prime that I couldn't even use game trailers, let alone gameplay footage of certain games or Nintendo would take out my video or take all of the ad revenue. Uh, so I've been there. I know this. And I also know, at least here on YouTube, that Nintendo can change their mind. After about a year and a half, Nintendo did get rid of their draconian ways here on YouTube. And not only did they lift the restrictions on using trailers and footage, although the Pokemon company still has some of their own stuff going on with that, but Nintendo first party made games. Uh, I can pretty much use any trailer I want or any gameplay footage I want or any stream I want. They also let us use any music that we want. Again, Pokemon games notwithstanding. So yeah, it's kind of cool because now I could throw things like this song in the background of my video and Nintendo just doesn't care. So yeah, we got some Nintendo music in the background today. Uh, because yeah, Nintendo again does not care anymore. They removed that restriction and allowed us content creators to do what we want. But what they haven't stopped doing is taking out fan created modifications or fan games. And one such uh, person is being targeted right now who created an extremely popular Breath of the Wild DLC known as Second Win. Now, before I get to the details on this, I want to let you guys know we have some giveaways going on. Uh, if you're interested in entering any of our giveaways, they're always down in the pinned comment and in the description as well. Also, you know, if it's your first time checking out the channel, I would appreciate if you would subscribe and maybe drop a like on the video if you enjoy this conversation. Now, I want to be clear before we get into this that I actually am on the, 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 the side of you guys, of the fans. I, I, Nintendo, they're, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They're doing just fine. Breath of the Wild sold 25 million copies and they have a sequel coming out. Uh, the Nintendo Switch is likely over 100 million units sold at this point. Nintendo is sitting pretty. Uh, so when it comes to fan projects, I've always been sort of a, hey, stupid, don't do it because Nintendo's eventually going to stop it. But also, hey, I get why you want to do it because you feel inspired and it's really, really cool. And this is a, a, a project this fan created that is really weird because it's been around for a little while now and Nintendo hasn't stopped it. And they're still not technically stopping it, at least not in the traditional cease and desist, we're going to sue the hell out of you and take millions of dollars kind of way. Um, so this fan has a YouTube channel called uh, Wicketero. And he created this DLC for Breath of the Wild called Second Wind. And he's been doing additions to the Second Wind DLC uh, for quite some time. It adds all new shops, all new abilities, potions, areas. Um, it makes modifications to enemies to create new enemies. In fact, here's some footage I'll show you of the latest addition that he's added to the game in this Hinox, uh, that can, uh, this really, really, really fun encounter that's completely out there for any of the other encounters that happen in Breath of the Wild. And I love it, and I love his creativity and his ability to modify the game in this way. And obviously, this DLC can only be used on PC, which is going to obviously upset Nintendo because, well, if you're playing it on PC, that means you're emulating the game, and there's a higher than likely chance, if you are, that you pirated that copy of the emulator or of the ROM. Although, then again, maybe you actually dumped your own files by hacking your Switch, I don't know. Uh, but in this case, uh, he's actually gained his popularity not from the second win DLC, but from another PC mod to Breath of the Wild called the Breath of the Wild Randomizer. And you've probably seen people like Peanut Butter Gamer and several other YouTubers out there over the last couple of years make videos around this randomizer because it's really, really fun. Randomizes everything in the game from where you're going to be, from what items you're going to have, to what enemies you're going to be, to all the... It basically messes up Breath of the Wild in completely random ways, hence called a randomizer. Uh, and yeah, it, it's just a lot of fun, a lot of crazy it's not really meant to be something where, oh my gosh, you're going to go play the entire game and beat it. No, because you probably can't. Uh, but it is just, you never know what's going to happen, and it creates some, a lot of entertaining moments, especially on live streams and stuff like that. 
But Nintendo's not going after content creators for using that, nor are they getting rid of the randomizer mod. They're not going after him for that. They're also technically not taking out the second win DLC. So what is Nintendo doing? Well, Nintendo probably has decided that they don't want the backlash anymore of taking out these optional DLCs and modifications that are built on top of their games because you still need to have a copy of their game legally anyways uh, to dump the ROM and use it. So instead of them going directly after these fan modifications, which they are a bit of a different legal gray area than say making a fan game making a fan game using nintendo ip that's clearly a copyright violation whereas modifications are kind of a gray area so nintendo's not really trying to take out that instead nintendo is flexing well the very thing i told you they stopped doing their youtube copyright ability that they own the characters in the game that they own the art assets and thus can shut down videos so this is what uh Wakatero told nintendo life he says nintendo attacked my channel and took down 40 videos so far if this continues the channel will be blank within a week i know a lot of you guys like mods hence the subscription there is only one way to change the termination of nintendo mods and that is to convince nintendo with a large number of people to change their mind the goal is to gather that many people together and that nintendo has to live listen to us and obviously I'm throwing my voice in the crowd here of saying Nintendo you need to just let this stuff be obviously because of the legal gray area they're not actually taking out the mods themselves but if you get rid of the content that enables people to discover those mods it then becomes very very difficult um, for these mods to get recognition and so what Nintendo's doing is they're using their copyright ability here on YouTube to take out his videos in fact gosh knows because I showed footage of something that maybe they even take out this video eventually now to Nintendo's credit they're not striking his channel because the easiest way would be to issue copyright strikes and actually get his channel completely destroyed so they're not doing that but they are taking out all of the second wind DLC videos which make up a majority of his channel at this point and that is that sucks like Nintendo's manually going in and copyright claiming these videos which again Nintendo has the legal right to do they've always had that legal right on YouTube but they started letting us all you do whatever we want but now because this person made a mod that Nintendo doesn't like maybe because it's actually a really substantial DLC I'm not gonna say it's necessarily better than Nintendo's DLC but it's definitely very interesting the creativity that's gone into it I just think that Nintendo needs to find a way to just let stuff like this be you want to shut down fan games i think that's stupid too i think there's a better way to do it just look at the sonic mania crew like they were making a fan game and they said this game is so awesome let's hire you to do sonic mania let's make this a real sega product uh, nintendo should probably lean more towards that side with fan games as well but even if nintendo is unwilling to budge on fan games can we leave the moderation community alone? Like, let, let, let people modify games as they see fit. It doesn't hurt anyone, and it has been proven time and time again that these fan mods don't hurt sales. If they did, hell, is Skyrim really hurting for money because of all the fan mods out there? No, of course not. In fact, people are now trying to find ways to be able to allow people who make these mods to profit off them with NFTs and all this crazy stuff. So, look, what I'm trying to say here is Nintendo... Can we just get with the times a little bit? We know you're behind the times a little bit with how you're handling your online service. You're behind the times with online accounts. You're behind the times a little bit with voice chat and all these other things that deal with the internet. This is another thing that's happening on the internet that doesn't hurt your bottom line, actually enhances the experience, keeps your game in the news and keeps your game more relevant today than maybe it was even. So this is, you know, a game back in 2017 that won game of the year, so it was already pretty damn relevant. I think that it's time, Nintendo. I, I hope you're watching this video. I hope you take the time out of your day to rethink who's ever doing this, whether it's their legal team, Golan Harris, Nintendo of America themselves, uh, I, I, whoever it is at Nintendo that's doing this. I hope you reconsider and consider the, uh, the, the fact that these fan mods ain't hurting anyone. I mean, you, you didn't you didn't step in when he made the randomizer. You didn't step in when Shrek was popping up in videos. You didn't step in when people dissected and completely data dumped the game. You're not stopping all these other things that are happening. So why care about this specific fan created DLC? You should actually be applauding it. It would be neat to see Eiji Inomu or Shigeru Miyamoto comment on this DLC online and tell people how amazingly 
cool this is. We just actually saw something recently where this isn't actually a playable thing, but a fan did some concept art of a new level, a new stage in ukulele. And the ukulele developers not only retweeted it, they actually responded and said how cool this concept is and how talented this person is. And it wouldn't it be neat if Nintendo would like grab this person, shout them out and just tell them, man, you're an extremely talented creator. Like, because, yeah, it takes talent to do what this person did with this DLC, what this group of people did. I want to be clear. It's a group of people doing this, and they're credited in the videos. So, I don't know. I, I, I do think that uh, there's just a better way, Nintendo. There's a better way. I get what you're doing from a business perspective, but I think you're being misguided in treating this kind of content the same as fan games. If you want to argue fan games harm your IP or take away people from buying legit copies, again, that's never been proven to actually be a reality in this world. But we know that that's been your stance for years. You guys make a fan game. It's probably getting taken out by Nintendo if it's Nintendo based. We, we saw this happen with, with Metroid 2 when a fan. Made, well, granted, we didn't know Metroid Samus Returns at the time was in the works, but still, it, it, it was kind of a crappy thing to do then. Um, and this isn't even that. This is just. A, you still have to have the original game. This is just an add on DLC package. And uh, yeah, they should just leave this stuff alone. So if you agree with me, drop a like on this video and send some well wishes to uh, Wake a Tarot. I'll have his channel linked down below. Um, because again, I, I, I fully believe that we have the right to make this stuff. Uh, even if Nintendo isn't technically taking out, you can still download this. It's still one of those, they're taking it out in the way of lessening how many people know about it. And that to me, can be even more damaging because at least if you just took it out it would exist forever online there'd still be videos of it people would still find it on torrent sites or whatever um, but they're letting it stay up to download they're just going to make it so people no longer knows that it's a thing thank you guys so much for tuning in and i'll catch you in the next video